All right. Are you ready for the letter R? I know you be. I mean, I know you are. Let's, <laughs> let's get going. The capital R starts out pretty traditional. Let me do my little diagram there. So my pen's in the number four position for this top curve. Starts out horizontal, then comes down to about the seven or eight position. Then my major stem downstroke is pen held at a traditional angle following the the line of my italicization and a little kick out at the bottom. Now, the top of this is very similar to the P. I want to make sure that I've got a nice open V shape up here that, that lets there be enough air in my letters. I call them, they look friendly that way. <laughs> I say they're friendly, they're friendly. We don't want grumpy R's, whatever we do. So I'm going to make my, my pen, in this case two pencils, stand on its hind legs, pop a little wheelie, go uphill, and then finish my curve. Now one of the differences between the R and the P is that I want to finish my curve a little bit higher. Let me, if this were the letter P, if it were the letter P, I would make this curve come down lower. Do you see the difference there? Here's a P, is down low, and here's an R, it's up high. Because we want to leave room for this final leg that kicks out. And one of the questions is, does the leg connect with the primary vertical stroke? And I don't think it does. Could go either way on that, but I think it looks a little better if we leave just a little bit of space, maybe about one nib width there, and then we do the final leg kicking out there with a hook at the bottom. Okay? That's a good capital R. Let me now go, go straight into the lowercase r, which starts out simply enough, very much like the letter N or the letter M with a nice, simple vertical. But just as I did with the M and the N, I want to either make take, change the angle of my pen to about a number 2 so that this line is very thin, and then I do the final flag at the top. That's one approach. The other approach is, let me do that again. The other approach is I make my pen do that, what I call pop a little wheelie, stand on just that one corner and come up here. And then when I get to the top, I lay it down to do that final flag. Now, if I do it this way, you see there's going to be an extra little angle in there. And I think, honestly, that's slightly preferred because every time you have to change the angle of your pen, first of all, if you're a beginner, you don't even have this, what I call a three and a half angle. It's not in your soul. It's not in your hand yet. It's not natural to you. So when I have you doing all these twist, pen twisting things, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm throwing a curve at you. Okay, that fair enough. And uh, so I think it's, it's better to get in the habit of maybe making your pen work on just that one corner and, but holding it at a traditional angle. Now, what if you want to connect a letter R to the next letter? The answer is you don't. Uh, it just, if you do something at the end of this, it just turns into some other letter that is unrecognizable. It's not appropriate to do it on there, so the R just stands by itself. Now, if by any chance the R is the last letter in a line of type, that might be a different story. You can, and I do have done this many times, you can do some kind of flourish like that, and it still looks like an R. Again, all of these end-of-line flourishes are very optional and very personal. And it only, we'll talk about it when we do the, putting this all together in a piece of artwork. We'll talk about when those are appropriate. Now let's do it all in felt tip pen. Holding my pen, so I'm here I am changing angles on you a little bit. A little bit flat starting up. Then now back to the traditional grip, traditional angle, making sure I'm following the angle of the italicization. And then making my pen stand on that hind leg that one corner, doing a curve that stops a little bit shorter than the capital P. Does that make sense? It looks like a P right now, except that if it were my chance recursive P, I would have made that line come a little bit lower. So I stop it a little bit higher so that there's more room for this nice final leg that is, a, in my book, a straight line with a little kick out at the bottom. That's a nice R. Let's do a lowercase r. Starts out very simple, downstroke. Then standing on my hind legs, just that one corner work doing the work, and the final flag coming down like that. Now let's progress to the dip pen. Getting a piece of paper out so that I can make sure my pen is behaving itself. 
And just to answer, if, you, uh, if you've watched many of these, you've heard me say this over and over and over again why I do this. But in fact, when I'm doing calligraphy at home or in my studio, I do use sticky notes. They're just so convenient and you could use any piece of scrap paper, but I find this, is, this works best for me. I like it. Okay, then the capital R. Again, do you see my hand shifting around? So I get that first stroke. I want it to be thin, not too thick. So I start at number four position, draw the curve around like this, then a vertical stem coming straight down, moving my hand, not just my fingers, and kicking out at the bottom. Up here, again, my pen pops a little wheelie, works on just that one corner, and then does a nice curve, stopping a little bit short of where I would with the P. Now I'm going to stop right there because I know I could feel I could feel the ink in the pen. I knew what my pen was going to do. In fact, I'm going to stop talking. I want you to listen to this. If if I push my pen uphill, listen to this. Huh. You heard that really well, didn't you? Let me do it again. When when you get that kind of interaction between your pen and your paper, huh, you know that you're not making a pretty line. The pen is chattering across, and that's exactly what happens when you try to push a pen uphill. So there are times when you can get away with it, and there are times you can't. And your ears were, will tell you, and your hand will tell you. I, in fact, I could feel it here before you could even hear it. So instead of violating the rule, I'm going to follow the rule, which is you always draw the pen or drag the pen instead of push it. So I finish this curve that way, and then I come in and do the final leg. Piece of cake right there. Let's do a lowercase r, and we're all done with the letter r. Nice vertical stroke. You notice how slow, slowly I'm going? And calligraphy is fun because you have to be relaxed. <laughs> this will be the most relaxed part of your day. You can go as slowly as you want. You'll get speed later. Then I make my pen stand on its hind leg, come up to the top, lay it down, and do that final flag. Good enough. Let's pretend it's the last letter in a line of type so I get to do that final flourish. And we're done with the letter R. You're doing a great job. I hope you're having fun. Let's keep going.